Huh? Huh? You're not bad, huh? Eh? Well, I forgot to turn the light on. But seriously, it's not bad, huh? Yeah, I'm looking at this right now. This, this should be good. No? Oh, my forehead's chopped in. Okay, but this is good. Alright, guys. My head might still be chopped off. Like, I'm still figuring this out. But I just watched a movie, and I want to recommend it so hard right now. The movie is called Bad Trip. Now, I know you must have seen this movie on Netflix. You were probably scrolling across Netflix, and you told yourself, what the fuck is this shitty movie? Trust me. Guys, just trust me on this. This movie is fucking amazing. I'm not even making this shit up. It's been a while since I've been so surprised by a movie. So I, I'm just going to give you what this movie is about. This movie is about uh, a schlub played by Eric Andre. Falls in love with a girl. The girl is having an art exhibit in New York City. He's in Florida. So him and his friend drive from Florida all the way to New York to go to this art exhibit. Now they steal a car from the friend who's played by a little whatever his name is. And they steal his sister's car who's Tiffany Haddish in the movie. And she's chasing them to New York City to get her car back. So this movie sounds so stupid. Like I, I described this movie, I can't even describe it well because the premise is so stupid. But it's intentionally stupid. This is one of the silliest movies I've seen in a while and I say silly in a good way. I really like this movie. And going in, I really didn't want to watch this movie because I still had a bad taste of Borat 2 in my mouth. Like, guys, I know Borat 2 is getting nominated for Oscars, okay? Two Academy Award nominations, screenplay and supporting actress. I know, I know we were all in the hype of coronavirus and uh, election and Trump and all that. But have you tried watching the movie now, Borat 2? I dare you to watch the movie now. You're not gonna laugh because the movie was very timely. That's all the movie had going for it, okay? Sasha Baron Cohen was good. He's Borat. He's lovable. Guys, just rewatch the movie. Rewatch Borat 2. Watch it now. You're not gonna laugh as much. It's not a good movie, Borat 2. It's on the same level as like a bad Santa 2. Or a Dumb and Dumber 2. Okay, maybe not that bad, but still like pretty not good. Okay, I had that shitty taste in my mouth. The shitty Borat 2 taste in my mouth. And then I watched this movie and I gave it the benefit of the doubt because I love Eric Andre. I think he's a really funny dude. I like the Eric Andre show. Uh, every time that guy breaks something or does a gag with his desk, I'm like on the floor laughing. I don't know what it is. It's just so silly. And this movie is basically 90, a 90 minute episode of the Eric Andre show. So for those of you who don't know, this movie was from the producers of Bad Grandpa, which is another movie I actually really like. I know that one doesn't get a lot of critical love. I think that movie is really clever. And I think this movie is clever in its own right. I thought that the whole gag, hiding the camera, whatever that genre is, that kind of mockumentary style, I thought that shit was all outdated, and I thought we kind of, like, touched every possible joke we could do with that setup. But Eric Andre really brings something new to the table here. What he does is that his character, along with the other characters in this movie, Tiffany Haddish, and the other guy, I'm fucking blanking on his name. He plays in Get Out. He's actually a funny dude. Uh, so they're all pretending to be in a movie. And everything rolls out like it is a movie. It's like you're watching the most cliche buddy road trip movie ever. But the whole joke is that they're doing this movie with a ton of people watching them. So, like, there's this scene where... <laughs> Eric Andre bursts out into musical number and he's just going up to random strangers doing this musical number and all the strangers are like what the fuck who is this guy and the whole editing of this movie the whole pacing the dialogue everything is like it's done for the like cheesiest fucking movie ever but it just so happens that it's with real life people and that's what I really enjoyed it really did put a different spin 
on the whole mockumentary style. Something, a, a genre I thought was getting a little tired ever since I watched Borat 2. I was like, okay, do we have to do another one of these? No, Eric Andre brings something new to the table. Like, the problem with mockumentary is people try to pick apart, like, okay, that is staged, this is not staged, this is staged, this is not staged. Eric Andre, what he does in this movie is that he'll intentionally make some scenes obviously staged, and then some scenes are not staged, and he really blurs that line, so you don't know what is staged and what isn't staged, which is really clever. Like, you have some scenes where it's obviously in, like, a real ice cream shop, but they have some insert shots in there to, like, keep the dialogue going or keep the story moving along. And within the same scene, there's some pickup shots that are just, like, normal film. And then some other shots where it's real people. And he really goes back and forth, even within just one scene, goes back and forth so quickly. So you kind of just say, fuck it, at some point, And you just go along for the ride. Like, that line b- between reality and fiction is so blurred. I thought this movie was so awesome. It just did something different. And it was something very minimalist as well, but yet very different. This movie was put on delay for quite a bit because of COVID. And I think this was supposed to have a theatrical release as well, but it ended up coming straight to Netflix, which is unfortunate because just like I talked about in my St. Maud review, that was a really well done movie. And had it been any other year besides the COVID year, I feel like a movie like St. Maud would have gotten some buzz. Same thing with this Eric Andre movie here, uh, Bad Trip. I feel like, had this been any other year, I don't know. It's Eric Andre, so his comedy is a bit more niche. It's a bit more random, a bit more stoner, a bit more weird. So I don't know how much people would have liked this kind of movie. But, uh, I don't know. I just enjoyed this movie for what it is. This is a fucking random, crazy movie. And it really tries something new. And it really pays off, in my opinion. Tiffany Haddish in this movie. I've had a problem with Tiffany Haddish. I feel like ever since she was in, uh, what was that movie called? Girls Trip? Ever since she was in Girls Trip, she's kind of been doing the same shtick. uh, Talking about her pussy. Talking about, like, just stuff like that. And it kind of grows thin after a while. I was scared she was going down a Melissa McCarthy route. But she's really good in this movie. And she's really doing something different. Even take aside what she's doing is, like, acting with real people. Putting that aside, her performance in this, it wasn't over the top. It wasn't yelling. It was it was just, like, a very normal, natural performance, which, I mean, she kind of had to do because if you're performing with real people, you have to be a believable character. But regardless, I thought she was really good in this movie. Eric Andre, as always, he makes me laugh. He's a funny guy. The other guy, what the fuck is his name? I don't know his name. The whole movie, I wanted it to be Hannibal Burris. Because it's always Hannibal Burris. But for some reason, I don't know if it was scheduling or something. They couldn't get Hannibal Burris. They went with this other guy. But he was good in the movie as well. Uh, One of my favorite scenes... I'm going to stop spoiling the movie because I want you to go see it for yourself. But I usually hate it in movies when people do... uh, like, acid trip scenes or drug scenes. Uh, I find them not funny because it's not fun to watch someone else do drugs, you know? Not that you should do drugs, but, I mean, I never thought it was funny in a movie. They always have that scene, like, in any Seth Rogen movie, they have that scene where it's like, whoa, they did drugs, look how crazy they are! But they do it clever in this movie. In this movie, the drug scene made me laugh. And even when you get... Like, this movie really follows the trope of every fucking buddy road trip movie. And even in the third act, I was like, okay, shit is gonna slow down. They're gonna do the whole cliche, they're not friends anymore, and oh, look, they're friends now. And even when they did that shitty trope in this movie, it worked. Because Eric Andre is going to some fucking (laughs) military dude, and the guy is just so sweet. And that's another thing I wanted to say about these movies. Usually this whole mockumentary style is so overdone and it's so cynical. I think that's what's really getting to me. All these movies, like the first Borat and the first Bruno, well the only Bruno, they're very cynical movies, but they're very funny movies. But I feel like when you keep getting hit over the head with cynicism, 
uh, it kind of, like, wears you down a bit. And there's only so much of it I can take. I like seeing how shitty people are. Like, that's what Borat was really good at. That's what Bruno was really good at. But in this movie, they kind of, like, mix in people who are shitty and people who are not shitty. Like, uh, the first scene of this movie is part of the trailer. Eric Andre gets his clothes blown into a vacuum machine. The whole scene, the bystander guy, he's just such a bro. He's just such a genuinely nice person. And another, like, that scene I'm talking about, in, like, the third act, where Eric Andre is breaking down, he's like, I lost my best friend, and he's talking to this military guy. And the guy's just, like, a nice guy, you know? He, like, tells Eric Andre, like, dude, like, get your shit together, man. Like, I got, we all been in a negative place. You got this. And I feel like that's what this movie did that a movie like Borat doesn't do, and it kind of found its niche in that regard. I liked seeing, yes, there's some people in this movie who are dicks and they ended up kicking Eric Andre or hitting him over the head or some shit like that, but there were genuinely nice people and good sports in this movie, and that's always fun to see. You know, not every movie, especially in this era where it's like a pandemic and this and that and this is a crazy time, feels good to just watch like a feel-good comedy, and this movie definitely brought that feel-good element to it. So, overall praise for this movie, Bad Trip. I fucking loved it. Wouldn't be surprised if this ends up on my top 10 of the year. I know it's a little early, but fuck. <laughs> Who would have thought this shitty Eric Andre Netflix comedy, Bad Trip. Fucking amazing, man. I can't stand under here. I'm from the street. People from the street don't hang people from roofs. 